That's a piece of art, isn't it? Sculpting. Mm. <laughs> Mark, you good? You good for reading tonight? Okay. Disease of the soul. Eighty-six B. Eighty-six B. And I'll make a couple of grunts here and there, but let's try it, okay? Now we're going to have a little fun this evening. Okay, start it. When a body has become diseased, mainly from an excess of fire, it produces constant inflammation and fevers. When from air, quotidian fevers. When from water, tertian fevers. Because that, that element is more sluggish than air or fire. And when from earth, which is the fourth and most sluggish of the elements, is purged in fourfold periods of time, it causes quart fevers and is cured with difficulty. Such is the manner in which diseases of the body come about. And those of the soul which are due to the condition of the body arise in the following way. We must agree that folly is a disease of the soul. And of folly, there are two kinds. The one of which is madness, the other ignorance. Whatever affection a man suffers from, if it involves either of these conditions, it must be termed disease. And we must maintain that pleasures and pains in excess are the greatest of the soul's diseases. For when a man is overjoyed or <clears throat> contrariwise suffering excessively from pain, being in haste to seize on the one and avoid the other beyond measure, he is unable either to see or to hear anything correctly. And he is at such a time distraught and wholly incapable of exercising reason. And whenever a man's seed grows to abundant volume in his marrow, as it were a tree that is overladen beyond measure with fruit, he brings on himself time after time many pangs and many pleasures, owing to his desires and the issue thereof and comes to be in a state of madness for the most part of his life because of those greatest of pleasures and pains, and keeps his soul diseased and senseless by reason of the action of his body. Yet such a man is reputed to be voluntarily wicked and not diseased, although in truth this sexual incontinence which is due for the most part to the abundance and fluidity of one substance because of the porosity of the bones, constitutes a disease of the soul. And indeed, almost all those affections which are called by way of reproach incontinence and pleasure, as though the wicked acted voluntarily, are wrongly so reproached. For no one is voluntarily wicked. But the wicked man becomes wicked by reason of some evil condition of body and unskilled nurture. And these are experiences which are hateful to everyone and involuntary. And again, in respect of pains likewise, the soul acquires much evil because of the body. For whenever the humors which arise from acid and saline phlegms and all humors that are bitter and bilious wander through the body and find no external vent but are confined within and mingle their vapor with the movement of the soul and are blended therewith, they implant diseases of the soul of all kinds varying in intensity and in extent. And as these humors penetrate to the three regions of the soul, according to the region which they severally attack, they give rise to all varieties of bad temper and bad spirits, 
and they give rise to all manner of rashness and cowardice, and of forgetfulness also, as well as of stupidity. <coughs> Furthermore, when with men in such an evil condition, the political administration also is evil. Okay, why don't we hold it just there, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, I have a, uh, Brad, where would you go for help? The oh, okay. Okay. Um, what does uh, inconsonance in pleasure mean? <laughs> Insatiable. I love the word. <laughs> I, what am I talking about? No restraint. Uh, yeah. no? Could you help out? No, okay, okay, okay. No restraint. I'll get some help. Again? Yeah. Incontinence? What? In pleasure. I need to write again. What? Did you say incontinence in pleasure? Well, I think if you just check exactly at uh, 86E on page 235. Even in quotes. <laughs> I mean, see, this is translated so everybody can understand it, which is why they go from Greek to English rather than to Scandinavian, which not many people know except Scandinavians and people in Brooklyn. I would, I would say they're probably talking about, uh, well, in continents, they're normally talking about someone that can't hold it in. This well, sounds like... Totally a, in? What? Somebody that... Oh, but wait a minute. You mean... Uh, too much? Uh, uh, well, is there any solution to it? You have to build up strength. Well, yes, ma you were going to say, Mary. No, I said, I believe Julie. Uh, I said, young lady, you, coming, you don't mind if she comes to your aid? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> uh, you have to build up strength. What? Strength. What does it mean? Uh, you have to build up the strength. Have to build up strength? Yeah, to overcome the incontinence. Well, then what would be... Control. What would be sexual incontinence? See, the word is used twice in there. Is it not? Mm -hmm. What's he talking about? And... To what does he attribute the fault or the problem? Okay. Well, he says that it's, it sounds like he's talking about uh, like premature ejaculation. <laughs> and um, it talks about man's seed, I think that's kind of self-explanatory, grows to abundant volume in his marrow. No. Uh, as it were, a tree that is overladen beyond measure with fruit. He brings on himself time after time many pangs and many pleasures owing to his desires and the issue thereof. He comes to be in a state of madness. Okay. Therefore, you would you would hold the position that God, this idea of incontinence and pleasure would mean... It sounds like premature ejaculation. Holding back, restrained from letting go of the seed. Is that right? I think it's it's when the is, seed is that what you say? I think he's saying the opposite that the seed is let go too soon, isn't he? Well, much. straighten it out so I can put it on the board. Well, it sounds like he's talking about. Uh, it it sounds like he's saying that the seed is um, is let go before before its time, <coughs> or that it's built up that it it's been uh, it's built up too much. Okay, look, let's try this for a moment, okay? See the too much? Is it possible that on page 235, uh, from the word and whatever and whenever, all the way down to that very long sentence, ending with 
and senseless by reason of the action of his body. That's all too much. Look, there's about eight lines. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. Dealing with too much? Yes. In the next section, right, six or seven, deals with the other extreme? It looks like it, yes. And that sexual incontinence leads to what? Constitutes a disease of the soul. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Come on, take a look. What's yes, going on? Yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and all of these, all of these affections are, are called by way of reproach. Here's that word again. So now comes his solution. <clears throat> What's his solution? Is it there from that second? In other words, we're just dividing up the text. Eight, six, and then solution. I, maybe I'm, I'm reading this oh, okay. incorrectly. It sounds like he's saying that the soul has become a, a victim to, to the body, the chemical, huh? whatever's out of balance, mm -hmm. and that the body has, has power over the soul. And, and I, I don't think that's right. Okay. See, hold it, go back into just a few of those lines and see whether you can add to it. Well, at, at the top of the page, before he begins that section, he, he talks about the condition. He says, he is at such a time distraught and wholly incapable of exercising reason. So it's the exercising of reason that would be the, the remedy or the, the answer to that. I think in addition, you could say at the bottom of the paragraph, it says that the wicked man becomes wicked by reason of some evil condition of body and unskilled nurture. Thank you. Two, two sources. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. One is Any condition evil. of the body. Yes. And the other is unskilled nurture. What's, what would that mean? Um, you, some kind of ed education. Some education. Right. Some kind of it. Right? Upbringing. Upbringing. Nurture. Right. Oh. So the solution is, hey, watch out. One is physical, and one is unskilled nurture. Huh. Although condition of the body here is, is the word hexus, which can also mean um, habit, or that, that condition which is brought about by habituation. So just to let you know, it's not like a simple thing of state. It could be also connected to nurture and education. Uh, and no one is voluntarily wicked, therefore right. this is not consciously decided upon. Right. Right, it's in the condition of the body or your early nurture. Mm -hmm. oh. Aren't these causes rather than remedies? Isn't he stating that these are the causes, not, not the remedies? We would have to look elsewhere for the remedies. But wouldn't it follow that if a cause... If, if unskilled nurture can lead to um, this condition, that the opposite, skilled nurture, yeah. could... Exactly. So then it, it would become both a remedy as well as a cause. Well, its opposite would be the remedy, right? That's what I think I just said. Yeah. Okay. Would you agree we have... St uh, depending, uh, a lot depends upon that one word, doesn't it? Incontinence. It's that, and that's a problem. There's two different terms here. The first one, sexual incont incontinence, is acolasia aphrodisia, right? Yeah. Acolasia perita aphrodisia, and aphrodisia, yeah. obviously, right, is, is loving matters, yeah. right? Because it has to do with Af Aphrodite. Mm -hmm. And the other word, acolasia, we know from other, sort, other things, you know, colazzo means to cut off, to curtail, and acolasia means not doing so. So that um, they, when they say incontinence here, they mean they mean not uh, limiting oneself in any way. I would assume, mm. or some kind of lack of limit. Not curtailing. Arthur, earlier you've advanced a notion. It's it's lack of uh, self-control or lack, lack of, of self-control. 
Like or self-restraint, self one of those words. What's the second one? The second one, I, it's, it's using a term right now I cannot absolutely not bring back, but it's um, the incontinence and pleasure there, it seems to be akrateya, it's three lines up from A, um, hedonon, right? Um, I think. Yeah, so he didn't have to do that. So the hedonon obviously is, is pleasure, but it looks like akrateya is the incontinence part, and I just don't know what that means, you know? It looks like it's weakness, if kratos is strength, and I think it is, but that, so, so that would mean weakness with respect to pleasure. So it put together with what came, up, <coughs> came above that, um, or and what follows, if there is a habitu, habit, habituation brought about by nurture, Right, that then that then would would lead one to not have any self control, which would then lead to a lack of uh, strength to control through lack of you know never building, never building. That's a possibility, but I still don't like that akratia. I don't know what that means okay. exactly. Sort of like Alcibiades. Would you would you agree though? The key terms are these words. Mm -hmm. And. He's saying it's the excess of these that produces the condition. Mm -hmm. Now, would you agree the, uh, the, key, the key section in the Republic on pleasures and pains and uh, desire and fear that's central. But see, in the Republic, uh, Book Four and Book Two, Book Four he talks about courage. Remember that discussion we've had on courage? In Book Four? He said, courage is a strange thing, he talks about it. It's linked with a whole bunch of ideas. And you have to list each one of these and keep them in your mind to see what he's doing. Because he's saying the real problem of courage is pleasure and pain. Now, he links pleasure to the word desire and pain to fear. Remember that discussion on the Republic mm -hmm. right some time ago, right? And he says, therefore, coach, it's a power. See, it's a power. And what you have to do is, um, it's a power through everything, see, through everything. And it must be the basis of your education or nurture. And a law should be constructed to protect it. And educators should enforce it. And uh, the key point is that... Uh, and with the lawgiver's station? Pardon? I was thinking of the lawgiver's part of that quote. You know, that only that, that the, the pleasure to... Well, that, that, uh, that uh, courage is the power to preserve through pleasure and pain, desire and fear. The, through everything. Through everything. That the idea that only what the lawgivers say to be feared is to be feared, right? I'm not missing an element of it. Um, but you see, uh, the key part of it, though, is it not? that you have to deal with the most dangerous thing. Mm -hmm. You have to know what is dangerous and what is not. Is it? Otherwise, there's no point to this being courageous if you're not dealing with what is dangerous and what is not. But is it, and that doesn't that go back to the passage that what is dangerous to, is to have a false image of the nature of reality? And that goes back to book two. 
right? Mm -hmm. And each, so what's the most dangerous thing is to have a conviction in your mind about the nature of reality that is false. Right. And your idea of what is good is in principle false. See, that's the worst thing all men and gods hate. That is terrible. Due to the fact that that leads you, right? Because that leads to? That, I was saying that it's in the most, it's in that part of the soul. The, your image of reality is called kuriata, kuriotatos, yes. which means the most, the most ruling or the most dominant part of you <laughs> about those issues that mm -hmm. are most, so what you determine to be real is what guides you through your life and that, that element of you that makes that, that rules you, if that's, if that's where the, the false image of reality is, yeah. then that's what you would, that's what all God and men would hate or fear is to have a false image there. Yes, yeah, so this, would you agree then in book two he says that therefore the question about what is real is really essential and he says uh, God is good in reality. Right. Right? Uh -huh. So look here, if God is good in reality, he said the problem, you know, the problem with pain is that then fear, well, if you then add fear to pain, then you're a victim, as it were, of torture, right? And this magnifies itself unending. Pain has a limit. Fear has none. He said, look here, pleasure and desire. Remember, his idea of desire is not what we call desire. He says, remember what it, the example he gave? Of a friend of his is walking by a corpse, and he doesn't want to look at it, and he's angry at himself because he wants to look, and he finally turns around and says, go ahead, eyes, feast, go ahead. That's desire, he says. And something you cannot turn away from, what we would call addictive. Right? So the problem is not pleasure. The problem is addiction. You become addictive to it. Right? Or you cannot turn away from it, which is what we call addictive. So it is not a war between pleasure and pain. It, it doesn't exceed. So when he says, hey, the, uh, there is too much, too little, but that's not the problem. Uh, therefore, notice that the problem and the solution then uh, is not easy to pull out of the section that starts and indeed almost all those affections which are called by way of reproach what should we call them instead of incontinence uh, self lack of lack of self, lack of self control and pleasure yeah. okay. is that right addicted to pleasure ah, ah. You're addicted, yeah. and hey that means you can go through pleasure without it becoming a demand, addictive. Is there some point uh, in drinking where you have to have it? Right? I mean, suddenly I need it. I can't turn away from it. In sexuality, is there a point where, uh, for a man, the point of orgasm, you can't turn away from it, it's just going to take over, it's a phys physiological response. Mm -hmm. Then you've gone too far. Hmm. That's no longer self-restraint. Mm -hmm. If that's what he's doing, see? Like what would happen as you're going along on different peaks, if you keep in mind the nature of reality is... Good. Divine. It's good. Mm -hmm. It's one. See? Good in reality. Yeah, that's good in reality. That's the issue with fear. Pardon me, that's the issue with courage. So this is in the background as he deals with this. Now we're going to go back to this later. Or maybe we should go to it now. <coughs> I don't know. What should we? Uh, Means of salvation, 241, top. What page? 241. Paragraph, uh, three lines down, the means of salvation, solution. Yeah, that's good, too. Um, um, 
needed to exercise See, the soul without the He body. talks about men and women in sexuality at 91. Mm -hmm. Agree? And the problem in the seed oh. and how he understands the seed. It's the idea that sperm comes from the head. They, I'm at B, 891B, mm -hmm. on page 249. They bored a hole into the condensed marrow which comes from the head, down by the neck, along the spine, <clears throat> which marrow in our previous account we termed seed. And the marrow, inasmuch as it is animate and has been granted an outlet, has endowed the part where its outlet lies with a love for generating by implanting therein a lively desire for emission. But has endowed the part where its outlet lies with a love for generating by implanting therein a lively desire for emission. Wherefore, in men, the nature of the genital organs is disobedient and self-willed, like a creature that is deaf to reason, and its attempts to dominate all because of its frenzied lusts. And to women again, owing to the same cause, right? So do you agree? He goes further with this image of the seed there. And as far as he's concerned, this is something that doesn't have restraint. Right? It's self-willed, it's animal, it's power. Just to offer, it, the, um, the word for self-will is that same root. The word for self, re remember I was saying akratia or yeah. akartia, without rule or without yeah. governance. Or, and here, it looks like that. Here is, is, here here is, is uh, 90. 90C, where it says, the nature of the genital organs is disobedient and self-willed. Yes. That rule, that self-willed is autocrates. Right, and so, and then it says, like a creature that is deaf to reason, and it attempts to dominate, and the word dominate is kratain, right? So it looks like, um, you know, not not the, the the wrong kind of rule, right? A dominance of this of this kind, the self will. That's good. Right? The wrong kind of ruler is is the problem. Is the problem. And that would go back for his whole thesis of the ruler. Right. <coughs> and nurture. Mm, nurture, right. Yeah, okay. Now, you're getting close to a conclusion. Can you pull it all together for this? Right. So when he starts over here, what we called Tantra last time, we're continuing it. Now, uh, he now is going to see, he's still following diseases of the soul from conditions of the body. He's going to continue that. Uh, and now here's where he has a remedial remedial to deal with this problem and there we have the section dealing with the soul itself. So this whole section of course deals with therefore the remedial view of dealing with
And it's a Interesting in respect to these illnesses of the body and soul are attributed to the conditions of the body. Now, if we go to 89, about it, E. So we really need a reader to go. Um, It's a discussion on, of course, on um, um, pranoia as well, but also uh, the issue of power and motion. Um, in each part of the soul, the three kinds of souls, each one has its own motion. Um, And uh, therefore, the whole issue of the three kinds of soul, they have to be related one to the other in due proportion. Care must be taken that they have their emotions relatively to one another in due proportion. Now we shifts. I'm at 245. And as regards the most lordly kind of soul, all right, so we've got the lordly kind of soul and what problems it has, and let's push on. We need a reader. Thank you. And as regards the most lordly kind of our soul, we must conceive of it in this wise. We declare that God has given to each of us, as his daemon, that kind of soul which is housed in the top of our body and which raises us, seeing that we are not an earthly but a heavenly plant, up from earth towards our kindred in the heaven. And herein we speak most truly. For it is by suspending our head and root from that region whence the substance of our soul first came that the divine power keeps upright our whole body. Whoso then indulges in lusts or in contentions and devotes himself overmuch thereto must of necessity be filled with opinions that are wholly mortal and altogether, so far as it is possible to become mortal, fall not short of this in even a small degree, but this much is to be great in this mortal part. But he who has seriously devoted himself to learning and to true thoughts, and has exercised these qualities above all his others, must necessarily and inevitably think thoughts that are immortal and divine, if so be that he lays hold on truth, and insofar as it is possible for human nature to partake of immortality, he must fall short thereof in no degree. And inasmuch as he is forever tending his divine part and duly magnifying that daemon who dwells along with him, he must be supremely blessed. And the way of tendance of every part by every man is one, namely, to supply each with his own congenial food and motion, and for the divine part within us, the 
the congenial motions are the intellections and revolutions of the universe. These, each one of us should follow, rectifying the revolutions within our head, which were distorted at our birth by learning the harmonies and revolutions of the universe, and thereby making the part that thinks light onto the object of its thought in accordance with its original nature, and having achieved this likeness, attain finally to that goal of life which is set before men by the gods as the most good, both for the present and for the time to come. Okay. All we need to do is understand it. <laughs> uh, notice he always starts with negatives, right? No matter what he's talking about, he'll talk about the way it is naturally, the way it is un un unnurtured, always. And then he talks about how it should be and, and the solution to bring it about. Three things, right? Like here. Right? Too much? Too little? Negatives. Solution. So first, the negative part. Whoso then indulges in lusts or in contentions and devotes himself over much thereto must of necessity be filled with opinions that are wholly mortal and altogether, so far as it is possible to become mortal, fall not short of this in even a small degree inasmuch as he's had a great, has made great this mortal part. Now he shifts. But he who has seriously devoted himself to learning and to true thoughts and has exercised these qualities above all his others <clears throat> must necessarily and inevitably think thoughts that are immortal and divine. If so be that he lays hold on truth and insofar it is possible for human nature to partake of immortality he must fall short thereof in no degree. And inasmuch as he is forever tending his divine part and duly magnifying that daemon who dwells along with him, he must be supremely blessed. And the way of tendance of every part by every man is one, namely, to supply each with its own congenial food in motion. And for the divine part within us, the congenial motions are the intellections and revolutions of the universe. These, each one of us should follow, rectifying the revolutions within our head, uh, which were distorted at our birth by learning the harmonies and revolutions of the universe, and thereby making the part that thinks like unto the object of its thought, in accordance with its original nature. Having achieved this likeness, attained finally to the goal of life, which is set before men by the gods, and is most good both for the present and for the time to come. So again, starts with negatives, then he pushes it. Now, the task is, there's only one real task in this stuff. Can you take this section and do it? Is there a doing? Is there something you have to do? And can you pull that out of the paragraph so we can do it? But he who has seriously devoted himself to learning, one, and to true thoughts, and has exercised these qualities above all his others. You know what? Inevitably, you know what he's going to do? He's going to think thoughts that are immortal and divine. That's it. How do you do it? What do you have to do? Well, you have to learn and uh, devote yourself to learning and to true thoughts. Right. That's the interesting. Right. The devotion word is like a a word of focusing all of your energies as opposed to religious. It's not a religious word. It's es espudakoti, which often comes out eagerness in its lesser forms. 
Yeah. So, yeah. Could, you mean one could go with love or, you know, rather than, well, I just want to say no, that's not right. devotion like religion. <coughs> and we need to look also at that great line, do we not? Uh, we must inevitably think thoughts that are immortal and divine. Because our friend Phronesis is in there. Mm -hmm. So that, if so be that he lays hold of truth, well, you know what? We'll partake of immortality. Right. But uh, how do you pull it off? These, each one of us, should follow rectifying the revolutions within our head, which have distorted our birth. By learning the harmonies and revolutions of the universe, page 72, and thereby making the part that thinks like unto the object of its thought. Hey, would you agree that doesn't sound right? It's not thought, is it? Right. We're back to noosing around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with kata, right? Yeah. Kata no, no, kata no e on, kata no. Twice, mm -hmm. good old kata no, kata no and yo. Right, so it's through. You know what? Sorry to interrupt, but no, no. You know, I was just puzzled by this. You see this exercise, these qualities? I started asking myself, what qualities? Wouldn't you agree? So, right? Go ahead. Well, the interesting thing here is that it says, has, it's, it's, it is the word for exercise. It's the gonadzo, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It becomes gymnasium and things like that in, our, in English. But, um, and it's actually would be exercising these of himself. So he's actually exercising. It has to do with exercising those learning and, and those true thoughts, right? It has to do with phronesis and philomathein, right? So the reason that's important is it goes to that idea of what's, what conditions the soul. You know, I, I was talking about that word for state, you know, the evil state versus the nurtured correctly nurtured state. Nurtured. This is saying this that is, there's an is, exercise the or a practice. There's the so, nurture. Okay. Right. Right on. Good. I love it. Um. And that, and the other word, devotion, if you think of it as, you know, an enthusiasm, or an, not an enthusiasm, but I don't know how to put it, a putting, putting a positive energy, focusing mm -hmm. a positive energy, then it seems like that, um, then that would lead to, um, what you were just talking about. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. Rats. The ob oh, kata. kata. Kata, the word means down. Or, you know, it's like, um, so I don't mean down in a negative sense, but the fact, it, doesn't the idea of kata, doesn't it give direction? A directed noose. So directing, so that's what I was wondering about, whether all of this has to do with a um, noetic practice. Yeah, noetic practice. Okay. Yeah, good point. Which we can say, intellect, intellecting the intelligible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thomas right. Taylor has that great section that we were talking about before, uh, earlier this evening, that magnifying idea. Right. Right, which is right at C5. <clears throat> Cultivating that which is divine. And has a daemon most exceedingly adorned, residing along with us, right, with him. Be happy and most eminently, to the, to, to the most eminent degree. Um, or blessed. Blessed, yeah, the yeah, 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 most eminent degree. Which blessed. I like blessed.
So let's see whether we can turn it around and ask. Um, can you use the intellect or can you use understanding to prepare for the way of the intellect? so that the intellect becomes like the object of its noose, right? Look here, see, we got this old problem. Seeing, object, seer, seeing, seeing. And the problem with this model is that no one would ever consider that the seer is going to be the same as the seen. It doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. right. But also there's a problem in it, is that you cannot know the seeing. This is not an object of sight. Right? My sight between my eyeball and here is not seen. Right, but apart from that, he's saying in the soul there is the intellect, and it is intellecting, activity of the intellect, the intelligible. So there has to be a state, there has to be a state, a psychic state. And the symposium is a great example of it, right? Beauty itself is seen only with and by the mind. The mind alone can see it. Right? But beauty itself is another word for reality. Right? So mind is engage in a certain kind of activity that grasps the nature of reality. But what you discover when you get a vision of the beauty, beauty itself is that it's not only reality, but it's no different than mind itself. If that's true then, the mind is, my, is minding or intellecting the intelligible. Reality is the intelligible. So therefore it's noose noosing the noetong. <laughs> uh, so the kind of reflection brings this about. And the assumption is that understanding can prepare the mind for this kind of intellecting. And Understanding that deals with this kind of issue, these kinds of issues, you see, prepares the mind for something that goes beyond understanding, but understanding can prepare the mind for the mind. Um, and this is the object of uh, philosophy of Propolis' Elements of Theology. That's what this is. Um, it tries to deal with this subject in a variety of ways in relationship between the soul, the good, Right? Intellect, intelligence, etc. That's philosophy. So we are a heavenly plant, a vine plant, heavenly plant, right? And the whole process going up. Oh, the key, key, the key, one of the key things we could look at is the role of. Uh, air as breath <coughs> as in blood. Blood blood can have extremes. It can get very hot and that's a danger. But breath brings air which is a cooling and therefore it settles the, the blood. So therefore it brings blood up to the head, <coughs> cools it, 
and therefore one doesn't experience all of the problems associated with hot breath, which he calls bad temper and impulsive, impulsiveness, etc. And okay, which is another yoga, this is yoga too. And as well, we talked already about the hara, uh, that part of the body which uh, you awaken between the navel and right. It's a living creature, wake it up. It has its own power. So therefore, there's quite a bit of interesting stuff in this. First, I want to make sure. Do you think so? <laughs> and the only question now is, do we go back and take a look at that paragraph that gives what's the reason he's doing the time in? It's to show the providence of God. And therefore, this ending <coughs> should fulfill the idea of providence. What's providence? <coughs> the way in which some good flows from the divine to man. That's providence. And he's saying, you know what you got to do to get it? You have to work together with your body to create the conditions for the receptivity of the goodness that's there. That's providence. So therefore, he's working, he's creating a picture of the nature of reality that needs order, harmony, proportion, symmetry, because that brings the condition about for the very kind of experience he's talking about. But what experience is that? That's uh, uh, pronoia. Uh, the idea of goodness. What kind of goodness? Goodness that proceeds from the good all the way down to the particular needs of the individual soul. Is that what he's doing? That's the whole book. Right? Uh, Go. Okay. I just wanted to, to say... Let's get us all together. I will. Uh, um, okay. The, just to wrap it up, or wrap up one Please. element theme. Please. At nine, same page we're working on, 247. Two. Page 247, 90D. That way of tendance. Yes, go right ahead. Okay. Well, the, the way of tendance, that's the therapeia that we, that we, were, we started out with. Mm -hmm. You know, the, and... Of, of every part by every man is one, namely to supply each with its own congenial food and motion. Well, the word for food here is trophe, right? Which is the word that was being translated as nurture, right? So we were looking for what was meant by nurture, and here's a connection to that. And, and the other thing that's interesting about that particular quote, um, where is it? Sorry, just a second. Okay, so, uh, I was going to find the actual term for you, and I was looking for it. Just a second. See, the, you're quite right, because... There it is. When, they, when the translator makes the choice to food, that's physical. Right. Right? Nurture is in the mind. Right. And this whole section deals with the mind, so why he chose food instead of nurture is the problem. Yeah, go ahead. Well, yeah, and the other thing that was interesting was about that was congenial means um, coming from the same root, right? It's sugenics. And this whole, this whole thing... Well, this page starts at the top by suspending our head and root from that reason, region whence the substance of our soul first came, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and you mm -hmm. just made the point that, you know, we want that um, by proper care, of, by proper tendance of our body, we set our soul up for, in a, for a certain state, right? And that that certain state of the soul um, can allow you the experience of pranoia or mind mind's goodness, or I don't know how to put that right now, but um, so I, it seems to me that that, that term sugenes would be better off translated, you know, the, 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 um, with, with nurture from uh, its original source or something along that, that line, right? Because that would fit in the context of that, of that paragraph really well. 
and connect up to the top of the page and to the idea of pronoia, the goodness coming sure. down from the divine. Absolutely. Okay. The time is. Now, Barbara said she was interested in doing something on Friday night. And is Barbara, can we book you soon? Yeah. You said um, 148. Yeah. And yeah. Well, um, at war. Yeah. Well, the pro this is the problem. I made a chart up for 148 of Proclus's element, and I intended it to be. Um, I did what's called parsing, you know, where you take each part of the, the, the Greek and you give all the forms and you show what the meaning is and you talk about the relationships within it. But the but the end the the documents on a chart, but it ends up the writing is really teeny tiny. So um, uh, I will see. You know, the work will be finished. And and okay, the, okay. I think what the original notion was to compare three translations, mm -hmm. right? And um, Thomas Taylor's I have one, and also um, Dodge Dodds. Right? So we have three translations we can look at, and each of them is numbered so that you can see what, what the parallel line is in each of those texts, and what the original Greek was. We can talk then, raise questions about that. I just wanted it more legible to the, to the, to the observers than it is. You have to be standing right next to it. But I think I, I can, I can, we can put those charts up, and I can, I can uh, make some initial comments, and then perhaps we can raise some questions. Sure, because that'd be, that'd be fine with 148 me. deals exactly with this issue. All right. The three kinds of souls, they can be the highest, the middle, and the lower. And therefore, it's a special kind of order, and he's going to talk about that kind of order, that you can plug in any idea. And therefore, it should be an example of what we're talking about, how to nurture the mind, and how to prepare the mind for vision, because that's what he's doing. That's what they're all doing. So, that depends upon Barbara remembering next Friday. That I, oh, I, I'm not, I couldn't forget that. I'll exist, in a state, I'll exist in a state of terror from now until then. So, trust me, that is the next okay. thing I forget. What books are we going to be working on? Besides, I didn't volunteer. This person here volunteered. Democratic. I would like that right. record on record here. Well, partially. <laughs> he asked if he could... I mean, she does such beautiful work oh, that, dodge. you know, I'd like to, to um, what? Dodge. tell her. Well, so we would all appreciate it. Initially, uh, Juan Balboa was involved. <coughs> yeah. And, and well, I had thought that we would, might convene a session of interested people, say, at Pierre's house in his little gazebo daily, and just and mm -hmm. get people interested in discussing it. But um, uh, that didn't pan out. And so we're still left with the issue of what's the best way to translate it and on what basis. And so, um, but I think you guys would be interested in it. Most of you like 148. So, so everybody, cool 148. Right? Proc. Proclus is elements Proc. of CO. Yeah. Oh. What about getting them blown yeah. up? Do you think? Well, uh, that's kind of a drastic way to get rid of them. Um, <laughs> blowing them up. Yeah. Yeah. Just a simple match would work, I mean. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know, Jules. Um, the problem is it's a chart like like this big, yeah. and it's filled yeah. with two things, letters that are this big that go from side to side, one-inch letters, and then like quarter-inch letters that fill in all the space underneath that. So it's kind of dense and, and awkward. Um, what size is the paper now? It's, well, I think it's two feet by, 22 inches by two feet, something like that. Okay. Chart paper, you know, sticky paper. So I was thinking we could stick it up on the blackboard yeah. and go from yeah. there. The, the other translations will be easily legible. It's just the Greek, the the mm -hmm. un, and anybody who were in, was interested. What I was thinking was doing was seeing if it could be copied easily, mm -hmm. and because it can be read, you know, and with a few, uh, you know, hints as to what's going on with some of the abbreviations, like you know, genitive, dative, whatever. Mm -hmm. And, and what I tried to do was underline sections, for example, that belong together, a phrase that belongs together. And there's a nice Mende construction I kind of circled and 
you know, to show what that looks like. So. Well, you know, Kinko's blows up small pictures like this to size half of that blackboard if you want. Right. Well, this is a no. thing. Well, I can look into it. I was going to go there and see if a copy could be made anyway. Yeah, so, you make um, them pretty large. I do. I, I didn't make them make as big as that copies. blackboard right there. But you can make them uh, 36 wide by 48. Yeah, see, that might be a better proportion. Yeah. It wouldn't work. I mean, uh, it, would, it wouldn't do any good to pull it this way. But to make it no, no, just general, it might work. Yeah. Okay, I can see. Take I can look, look into it. it. It's, yeah. it's what they use when they're uh, doing uh, layouts for or architects. Do. Yeah, I mean, that's what I was thinking, that, that at least it could be copied. Mm -hmm. and, and then uh, people can play with it. If they and want. maybe the Noetic Society can pay for it. If it's hideously expensive, I might yeah. accept yeah, it. Yeah, probably. Your teacher it's expensive. Expensive. What do you call yeah. expensive? Yeah. What's what? expensive? <laughs> What's expensive? What do you call expensive? A hundred bucks. That would be three eighty nine a sheet. It would be $3.89 three dollars and eighty nine. Oh, cents that's for each huh. sheet. To blow it up? Yeah, I make them that. I mean, really nice. Yeah, I oh. get them. I make them every week. Oh, oh, I do that. No, that's that's great. I I would be even be willing to pay it for that. No, we still pass we'll, it over. We'll still pass it over. Yeah. Okay, so there you go. All right. Okay, Exciting. next. Um, think about what dialogue you guys would like to get into next. I was thinking of uh, well, the Philebus. Yeah. Yeah. It's got a very nice order and dialectical study. And we also have Damascus's commentary on it and kind of have fun going between <coughs> the two. Spell that. Uh, I'm not, I'm still open to other suggestions, by the way, so think about it for next Friday, so then we can, after Barbara, we can pick up one of the other dialogues. Do you want me to send out a... Yes. That we're, that we'll yes. have one week on 148 and then yes. after that? Okay. Yeah. yeah. The things were created, <laughs> just were created women and the female sex in general. Mm -hmm. But the race of birds was created out of innocent, like minded men who, although their minds were directed towards the heaven, imagined in their simplicity that the clearest demonstration of the things above was to became, be obtained by sight. These were remodeled and transformed into birds, and they grew feathers instead of hair. I just, I just, it, it seems like he's talking about metempsychosis. Yes, he is. That's right. That's right. What's metempsychosis? And further as well. I, yeah, I mean the whole, the yeah, whole part conclusion. Now. What is metempsychosis? It would be the, uh, the basically a, a recycling of of soul and what? and a generation uh, after death, a regeneration after death of soul in a different form. You know, it's only fair then. Mm -hmm. uh, we should look at the last paragraph. So I, 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 I don't want to. The time is right. I mean, it, it seems to have a place of importance, almost climactic. It is important. Yeah. It's also in uh, in the verb. Oh yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll think about it. And now at length. We may say that our discourse concerning the universe has reached its termination. <clears throat> For this, our cosmos has received the living creatures, both mortal and immortal, and have been thereby fulfilled. It being itself a visible living creature, embracing the visible creatures of perceptible God, made in the image of the intelligible, most great and good, fair and perfect in its generation, even this one heaven, soul of its kind. It's a beautiful image because oh, yeah. it, it, it's like a, the soul is not something that's you know, contained within the body that we possess, mm -hmm. 
but it's, it's a, a world song, a cosmic song. And, and then the idea of justice here, the, the, the birds, the soul manifests itself in birds rather than human beings because of a kind of limit. Um, a, this is what happens if, you, if you're deluded by, by seeing. And if you mistake the visible as, as something real. Yeah, she's got a general principle. Um, that all the variations of men can be expressed in all the variations of animals. I may have never lived with a text this long. Come to party you. Thus, both then and now, living creatures keep passing into one another in all these ways as they undergo transformation by the loss of or the gain of reason and unreason. And of course, that's news. Mm. Right. The transformation of different kinds of animals is by the ascension or gain or loss of news and the lack of it. You got a good quote? No. Okay, thank you. Ah. Time for sitting down. Are you ready, Mother? I need to take care of talking about this earlier.